Hi. All right, good afternoon. I'm so happy that you're all here. So long before I knew what psychological safety was, uh, actually long before I knew what applied improv was, I was just a girl who found improv on the stage, performing crazy characters, joining troops with names like Spongebob Space Cookies, and two girls, three eyes. I loved it. It was silly. It was the only place that I could create without boundaries. And I needed that because I did not have that in my work. And I am a creative person. So I loved it. Fast forward 10 years, and like many of you, I discovered its application to helping teams and individuals be better at work and life. And after experiencing the benefits of improvisation firsthand in my own career in business-to-business -business sales, I became very driven and very passionate to share the improv mindset with every workplace I could get my grubby paws on, right? So fast forward another five years, and I'm throwing yes down around the workplace like bagels and donuts. Yeah. I, uh, I, I loved it. And I'm one of those AI practitioners. I've weaved in and out of making this my main hustle and then my side hustle and then my main hustle and then my side hustle and then I'm just hustling. Because it turns out a lot of people don't want to hire me to throw pastries around the office. Yeah. But I really, really, really enjoyed the work. And the bulk of the work that I do is team development and skill building. And the work that keeps finding me more and more is the team development piece, bringing teams together to do more, bringing diverse mindsets together to create. And that's hard to do in today's global economy, organizational landscape that we're in. There's a lot of ego, there's a lot of competition, there's a lot of silos. So I really found myself working with a lot of teams to solve big problems when it came to some of those issues. Can we all just get along, right? So I was, a couple of years ago, heads down doing some research for a talk that I was giving on creating a culture of cross-collaboration in the digital age when I first came across the work of Amy C. Edmondson and Google's two-year study, Project Aristotle, enter psychological safety. And I set my Google alerts, like any AI nerd, to psychological safety. And I'm getting like a couple of articles a week. And then I'm getting like five to 10 a week. And now I get like 500 a week. So the, re the release of Amy's book, all of the podcast and all of the articles in the New York Times and all of the blogs, I mean, it's a big deal. But just in case you were in a cave somewhere, at its very simplest form, psychological safety is the shared belief that the team is safe for interpersonal risk-taking. So the AI nerd in me is looking at that like, duh, it's just an improv principle. I mean, we can correlate improv to anything. That's what we do as AI people. Not getting along with your partner? Improv for couples. Want to be a better cook? Improv for chefs. Improv for arborists. Improv for acrobats. Improv for yoga. Improv for dogs. I mean, that's, we do it. We, if you don't believe me, look at our agenda <laughs> at this conference. We do a very good job of that. But I mean, improv and psychological safety? Twinsies. Like, seriously. I began to connect all the principles of improvisation to psychological safety. I mean, it was so easy. And also, we had all of these stats now and research and science and psychology and studies and a bunch of smart people at Google backing it up. I mean, what else do we need? I started weaving that into all of my learning experiences at every opportunity. I mean, I had to, right? Anytime we're working with a team where the goal is to increase levels of trust, 
increase team collaboration and communication, teams need to know that climate matters. And now, we, da da, right? Nailed it. Boom. Maybe. Or maybe we pivot, right? So, a few years ago, I found myself in a job that I loved. I mean, I was uber passionate about this work, like a kid that loves candy. I, it's the kind of job that I was like, everything I've done in my life up to this point let, led me here. I was confident that I was in a culture where I could create, where I could share ideas, where I could be myself. Oh, God, finally, I can be myself. And I felt safe. I'm pretty sure I walked around the halls of that place <laughs> just like this all the time. I, I know I probably freaked some people out. I had a big smile on my face all the time. I was beaming. And I was just so happy to be there. And I remember once the honeymoon phase was over, two months in, I was at my house because I worked remote. And I got a call from the bosses. Dun, 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 dun. And it was two, two people. So that was already intimidating that every time I had an interaction with my leader, my boss, it was two people. So they called, and I'm like, hello, <laughs> beaming. And they're like, yeah, well, Christy, um, word on the street is, uh, is that you've been a little pushy with uh, sharing your ideas with the team. So we're going to need you to kind of bring it on down. And by that, we mean just stop. It's probably going to be best. And I'm like, <laughs> What? I mean, I love this job. Why would I do anything to piss anybody off? And I was like fighting back tears. I literally think I said that and I couldn't breathe. And so I stopped sharing ideas. And after a few interactions, very similar interactions with my bosses, I stopped asking questions. I stopped being me. And I didn't contribute unless I just had to. I lost my soul. That's what it felt like. So I just got out of there, right? So as I thought about my experience recently, as I'm trying to work with these teams, helping them create a psychologically safe climate, which is so important. I had one of those moments we have as AI practitioners, facilitators, trainers. Ah, this seems too hard. Why am, why am I asking them to do this? It's so hard. And so I like this definition better. It spoke to me, and it frames it differently. Psychological safety is being able to show and employ oneself without fear of negative consequences of self-image, status, and career. Because that definition puts the onus on the person. It is not reliant on a leader or a shared belief, because that is a little bit out of our control. Right? What does this really say? It says, I'm going to be me, and I'm, I'm going to go to work, and I'm, I'm, I'm just going to have the courage, and I'm going to be brave. And what might happen? I might influence change, right? I might leave my job. I might get fired. We can drive more change if we teach people how to cultivate it for themselves. Shifting the message from helping teams to create a climate for interpersonal risk-taking to helping people be brave and courageous and willing to take risks no matter what the outcome. It's, it's a subtle difference, but it's really, really important. If I could go back to that girl that I was three years ago, I would say to her, you know People shouldn't have to work in this culture. You are walking in fear. You are scared. Be courageous. Be brave. Follow your gut. Even though it's scary, you will come out happier on the other side. You can create psychological safety within yourself. Thank you very much.